Dr. Bob Stark here again. Uh, in this video, we're going to discuss the public key infrastructure, uh, or PKI for short. Now, to illustrate th uh, the, the advanced properties of PKI la later, let's first talk about a shared key communication. Uh, this is also, also call, often called private key. Uh, communication or private key cryptography. We have two people. Um, it is traditional to call them Alice and Bob. And they want to they want to talk to each other, um, send email back and forth, and they want that email to be um, free from prying eyes. And the best way to do that is to encrypt it. And the way encryption works is you have an algorithm that scrambles the bits of, uh, of your message in such a way that it looks like garbage to Oscar, our malevolent um, eavesdropper. Um, when we encrypt, it looks to him like garbage. And the only, the only person or people who can decrypt that message are those people who have a key to the algorithm. And the key is just you know, a, 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 st a string of ones and zeros um, that can that that holds the key to descrambling the all the the message. Um, in shared key communication, Alice and Bob meet face to face and agree on a key. That same key is used to encrypt and to decrypt the message. Um, if they if they're able to do this, uh, they're able to meet and agree on a key then their communication is actually quite secure. Uh, shared key uh, algorithms are, are, are quite secure and very, very difficult to break. Um, and Oscar, he may be listening in, he may be tapped into the wire between Alice and Bob, he may be um, listening to the Wi-Fi signals they send back and forth to each other, meaning he can pick up the data, but because it's encrypted he can't see it. Um, if he doesn't have the key, he's out of luck. He can't uh, read what they are sending back and forth to each other. Um, the problem here, though, is for shared key communication to work, Alice and Bob must be physically in the same, same place. Um, for our modern communication infrastructure, um, if we can't simply have two parties get together face-to-face -face and agree on a key that each one of them keeps secret. Um, we can't uh, have, have them do that for every uh, transaction. It's just too much, too much work, uh, too much overhead. So shared key communication while it has its place, um, is not uh, appropriate, at least not at this level, for, um, for, for you know, the kinds of communication we have today. But we still need some way to encrypt our messages, some way to keep prying eyes, like Oscar, um, from listening in and, and from reading our mail. So enter public key cryptography. In public key, once again, we have Alice and Bob. Alice looks like she's gotten taller and skinnier since our last slide. We have Alice and Bob communicating, and in the middle here is Oscar, our bad guy, who is trying to, trying to read their email. Now, in public key cryptography, let's assume that Alice is sending an email to Bob. Alice has two keys that she's using for encryption. She has a public key and a private key. And so we'll call this public key um, a.public and private key a.private. Alice has, has both of these. She keeps her private key, since it's private, she keeps that secret. And then she publishes her public key so that anybody on the internet, Bob and Oscar included, have a copy of that key. And I, and I apologize, I'm, I'm backwards on this. We're actually having Bob send to Alice in this case. So the way this works, Bob encrypts a message to Alice 
using her public key. Alice is the only one who can decrypt it, which she does with her private key. So she kept she keeps her private key uh, secret so that only she knows it. And then Bob or Oscar or anybody can create a message and send it to her, um, encrypted. And she is the only one who can who can decrypt that. By by having this private key, she she always knows that the message was intended for her. Um, and we have algorithms that do this, um, uh, GPG, uh, PGP uh, are, are both both examples. Um, this is the the most mainstream form of cryptography we have today. Um, now, as as you see it right here, it has a couple of problems. Um, first one being that Oscar can also um, encrypt a message and send it to Alice, uh, which leads into what we call the authentication problem. Alice knows that when she decrypts a message that it was in fact intended for her, but she doesn't know if it came from Bob or if it came from Oscar. So there's no way to know who actually sent it. There's no way to confirm that it was a, um, that it was a legitimate message. The nice thing about this is that we can use this for authentication by actually running the system in reverse. So now we can take, do what I intended to do in the first place, Now we can run, run the communication the other way. Alice wants to send, send a message to Bob, and she is going to sign to um, encrypt it with her private key. Now before, Bob was sending to Alice, encrypting the message with Alice's public key. So only Alice could decrypt it. Now we're going the other way. Alice is taking her private key, which only she knows. So Oscar doesn't have her private key. Only Alice has, has her private key. She's using that to encrypt a message. Sending it out to Bob. Bob and Oscar can both decrypt it using her public key. So what this says is that now we know that that message came from Alice. Now, that particular message cannot be, um, is, is really not a private message between Alice and Bob. But if Bob gets it, he knows that it came from Alice. He knows that it did not come from Oscar um, because he's decrypting it with Alice's public key. Now, this leads into one more problem. How does Bob ultimately know that he, in fact, has Alice's public key? Maybe Oscar wants to impersonate Alice, so he sets up a website claiming to be Alice, and he puts a public key on there that's actually his public key. So now, if he were to send a message to Bob, Bob would be decrypting it with what he thinks is Alice's public key, but it's really Oscar's public key. So he thinks Oscar is Alice. So that's a flaw in using um, public keys and private keys um, to, to authenticate a transaction. So we take it one more step further. We introduce the concept of a certificate authority. CA for short. So CA is an organization that actually does their homework in terms of, of checking up on people. So a CA issues certificates, which among other things is a, is a digital document that has um, a user's public key. Um, probably their contact info. And more importantly, the certificate authority has, like I said, done their homework, has checked up to make sure that the certificate that they issue does in fact go with the person they issue it for. So in this case, if they issue a certificate for Alice, they've probably contacted Alice um, you know, done some, given her some questions to, to confirm that she really is who she is, who, who um, she says she is, 
And once they, they verify that Alice truly is Alice, they, um, they can issue a certificate on her behalf that contains her public key <coughs> so that if somebody gets a, a message, say Bob, if he gets a message from somebody purporting to be Alice, he can decrypt it with the public key issued by a certificate authority and determine if that is, is legitimately her or not. Um, part, of, part of the issue here is that a, a certificate authority is supposed to be trusted. So they either have been vetted by government or just um, good business practices um, and have shown to behave themselves. They are somebody that we assume we can, we can trust. Um, that's not always the case, um, but it, you know, we, the infrastructure is in place now that there are well-known certificate authorities and we can generally trust that a certificate they issue um, is valid and is from the, the correct person. It, if you dig down into your browser, um, like Firefox or Internet Explorer or somebody like that, um, they actually have the IP addresses and the certificates of certificate authorities hard-coded into them so that the the vendors of those browsers, Mozilla Corporation uh, for Firefox, um, Microsoft for Internet Explorer, they've actually verified that the major certificate authorities are trustworthy and so that they will accept certificates from those CAs directly into their browser. So these are the, the, the major components of, of a public key infrastructure. We have a certificate authority that verifies users um, and, and make sure that they are who they say they are and in doing so they become a repository for public keys so anybody want who is receiving a message from a person registered with a certificate authority can check that message um, against their public key and use that for authentication of that per person similarly they can then take that public key and encrypt a message to them and, and send it back to them all right, this is just a brief intro to public key infrastructure, and uh, if you have questions, again, feel free to ask me, email me, pronto, uh, however you can get in touch with me.